Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. It's a girl I'm with you here and just in case you're seeing my face for the first time, you're welcome to join us. So I don't know if you guys if any of you have seen Barbie the movie. I've not seen it, but of course you already know by now that I love Candice Owens and I love hearing her perspective from any issue at all. And this one is gonna be about the Barbie, so let's hear what Candice Owens has got to say about the movie. And if you've seen it by any, if you've seen Barbie the movie, I'll, I'll get to, I would also love for you to, you know, comment, leave a comment in the comment section, telling us how the movie was, if you enjoyed seeing it and what you learned from the movie, and of course, if what Candice Owen will be saying is what you got from the movie or not. Well, let's check it out, let's hear from Candice. All right, guys, it's Friday. We made it to the end of the week. And the question of the day, and I think it's kind of reflecting on the entire week, is the American IQ at an all-time low? I think the obvious answer is yes, given the details that have come out about the Carly Russell case that we have been obsessed with all week, looking back at the Jesse Smollett case. And now today I'm going to tell you a case pertaining to an 18-year-old mother who has just been arrested for using a website to hire a hitman to kill off her three-year-old son. Now, of course, that is absolutely abhorrent, but the manner in which this woman was entrapped is just, you are just not going to believe the levels of stupidity that have now been reached. Plus, I'm going to tell you guys why I won't be heading this weekend to see the new Barbie movie. And if you guessed because it's feminist garbage and it's really about hating men, then you would be correct. All that and more today coming up on Candace Owens. to begin with the story. I don't know where we should start, you guys. Well, her name is Jasmine Paez. She is 18 years old. And the truth is that she solicited an assassin through a website that turned out to be fake. Now, she listed as an assassin to kill off her three-year-old son, and she allegedly agreed to pay $3,000 for the kid's murder. That's absolutely abhorrent. I, I don't even understand. Does anyone... Hold, like, hold your gunpoint that you must give birth or you have to, you know, you know go through the process of giving birth. And of course, fine, you have $3,000 to pay a hitman to murder your child. I don't understand. What's stopping you from taking that baby and going to give to people? I know a lot of people, I don't even know. Like, I don't even know. Like, what I'm just trying to wrap my head around is, what made her to get to that point where she's looking for somebody? Like, I don't even understand. Should I even go to drop the baby somewhere? And I know a lot of people, uh, there are orphanages uh, that accept babies now, even in the US. Because I know it, in my country, there are orphanages. It can, people usually go to drop their babies in front of their house, in front of the orphanages. They wake up to babies. Most times. And they're taking the baby and, you know, the baby, they, they train the baby. Oh, this one is disgusting. It is sickening. That kid is going to be damaged as he grows older and finds out that that's what his mother wanted to do with him. But park that aside for a moment because I really want to show you how this woman got caught because I think when I first read this headline, I assumed, okay, this must be a website that's being operated by the government. It must actually, maybe it's on the deep web. She thought that it was legit and she got entrapped by some federal agents. That is not the case at all. This website is not on the deep web. It's actually a parody website that keeps trapping people that believe that it's somehow real. And it's, it's remarkable. You, you wouldn't even believe the video that is on this website that I'm about to show you. Take a listen. Yeah, hey, you. Yeah, uh, you're looking for a hitman? You got an issue <laughs> that needs resolving? Uh, look no further than rent a hitman your point and click solution yeah we're on the world wide web not the deep web not the dark web the world wide web and and uh you know tell them guido sent you surf down to the bottom of the page fill out the web form and submit it and i'll tell you i'll personally put you in touch with one of our over 18,000 field operatives that we have worldwide and your security and, and privacy is important to us. And we are 100% compliant with HIPAA, the Hitman Information Privacy and Protection Act of 1964. 
So check us out, renahitman.com. I just don't understand how anybody could watch that video, could glance at that website and not see that it is obviously not a safe and secure rentahitman.com website where you can actually hire a real person that is going to kill somebody for you. But this woman obviously believed that it was, and she rented somebody on the website. They have a form request that you can fill out. I want to kill my employer. I want to kill my boyfriend. I want to kill my husband. You, You tick boxes like you're taking a multiple choice SAT, and then you agree to whatever payment it is, and they tell you that they're going to get in touch with a hitman. Well, this time he passed. But seriously, as sick as this may sound, I won't, I won't be surprised if there's actually a website app like that. But of course, we know it won't just be like this. It will, everything there will be coded. I, I won't be surprised at all. Like the way we are right now, I won't be surprised at all. Passed this over. Of course, the police, his name is Robert Inez. He's the one that runs the website. And it turns out that this young woman is not the only person that uses it. No, Jasmine, the 18-year-old, is not the only person that keeps getting duped by it. It's actually routine. He receives about hundreds of hitman solicitations per a day, and then he fires them off to local police departments. He says that both the service request form and the careers form have been used many times to arrest people that are interested in using the services of a hitman on someone that they know, including a story that came out recently, earlier this year, when a Tennessee Air National Guardsman was arrested after applying to be a hitman on the parody website. That's just sad. I mean, he applied to be a hitman on this ridiculous website that if you have any modicum of intelligence, you would go, oh, ha ha, he's obviously being tongue in cheek by saying the World Wide Web is totally safe. And this isn't even the dark web. We're just going to do this in broad daylight. Back in 2021, a Michigan woman admitted to using the site to hire a hitman to kill her ex-husband for $5,000. And since 2018, at least 120 people from across New York State alone have turned to rent a hitman dot com to rub out others in their lives. It's implausibly stupid. It, it really actually is, is implausibly stupid. And I, I was fascinated by the story for the same reason that I've been fascinated by the Carly Russell story for the same reason that I've been fascinated by the Jesse Smollett story, because it, it really forces you to question what is happening in the American education system. Forget the education system, because what is happening in terms of people just being able to form common sense thoughts? We are becoming increasingly dumber. Why did Carly Russell think that she could pull off her staging her own abduction through a forest and picking up Cheez-Its and then reappearing on her parents' doorstep and nobody was going to have any questions? Why did Jesse Smollett believed that he was going to get away with hiring Nigerian men wearing MAGA hats and telling them to pick up bleach at a Home Depot and throwing it on him and nobody was going to find out. Are these pe- what are these people aspiring for in these circumstances, right? Is it, is it fame? Is it notoriety? Is it that these people are all suffering from a sociopathy? Or is it actually something that is much more simple, that we are becoming increasingly stupid in this society. Unfortunately, I believe it to be the latter. And that is all that I'm going to say about that. Okay, now it's time for some topics du jour. All right, the Barbie movie. Let's talk about it because we have been hit with advertisements everywhere, articles everywhere. We are seeing Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling everywhere as they are obviously on a world tour Uh, premiering and promoting this movie. And I know tons of people are going to see it this weekend. And I just want to say that I'm not going to be one of them. And I'm not trying to burst your bubble. If you want to go see the movie, I get it. It's a fun thing to do. If you're a group of girls, go see the Barbie movie. It's going to be, it already is a blockbuster success. But I'm going to just explain why I don't want to see it. Now, obviously, if you listen to this podcast, you know, one of the things that I really hate is that we are living in a world that is increasingly anti-man. While we are pretending that women are suffering under the foot of the patriarchy, what's actually happening is that toxic feminism has risen to the top 
and is actually oppressing men with movements that make entirely no sense. It's why I was so outspoken against the Me Too movement, where men were being condemned for absolutely no reason. We covered recently on the show examples of toxic feminism. The the young lady, Jonah Hill's ex-girlfriend, 25-year-old, who saw that he was happy and in a relationship and decided to leak personal text messages where he very politely conveyed to her what he was looking for in a relationship and that she wasn't it because she likes to post naked photos online and he wants somebody that is in spirit, more conservative, right? And he found that person. That is an example of toxic femininity, trying to ruin somebody's career because you weren't what they wanted and trying to make it seem as though, as she uh, tried to characterize his messages, he's an emotional abuser. No, he just doesn't want to date you. Similarly, obviously, with Bibi Rexa, the artist, releasing text messages where she was in a conversation with her ex-boyfriend and she asked him whether or not she had gained weight in the face and he said yes. You have in the nicest possible terms. And she didn't care. She didn't care. She shared the message because this is what women are have been conditioned to be recently. Vicious toward men to pretend that every man is somehow an abuser. So when I saw this review by somebody that I actually do like to read in the Daily Mail, Sarah Vine, I knew that I could take her words at face value because I just felt that this movie, there's always an angle now. We, I think, are all alive to the fact that Hollywood is very much propaganda. It's very rare when we just see a story where the story is being told and we're not trying to have our minds changed about a cultural issue or having us swayed or inspired by a cultural issue. Um, and it, according to Sarah Vine, that is exactly what the Barbie movie is, that it is propaganda. So I'm going to read you some of her words in this article that I found to be particularly impactful. Sarah Vine writes, my main criticism actually has nothing to do with the subject matter. Barbie or no Barbie, it's not intrinsically that good of a film. It's uneven, disjointed, and the plot makes no real sense. And the dead hand of corporate America weighs heavily upon it. But my main objection is that Barbie is not really a film about Barbie at all. It's one hour and 54 minutes of extended misandry, dressed up with a few fun dance routines and one or two granted fairly decent jokes. It is a deeply anti, anti-man anti movie, an extension of all that TikTok feminism that paints any form of masculinity other than the most anodyne as toxic and predatory and frames women's liberation not as a movement based on achieving equality between the sexes, but as a cultural revenge vehicle designed to write men out of the story altogether. Every male character is either an idiot a bigot, or a sad, rather pathetic loser. If the roles were reversed and a male director made a film about how all women were hysterical, neurotic, gold-digging witches, it would be denounced, quite rightly, as deeply offensive and sexist. In a nutshell, Barbie and Ken set off on an adventure to the real world to discover the source of Barbie's sudden and uncharacteristic anxiety. Barbie gets a nasty shock. She's not as universally popular as she imagined. Ken, on the other hand, has a tremendous time plugging into the macho culture of L.A. and discovering that there is such a thing called the patriarchy. He then turns into a real man, again, sketched in the most one-dimensional of cliches. Goes back to Barbie land, organizes the equivalent of an incel uprising, quite literally, given Ken's lack of tackle, and brainwashes all the Barbies into becoming his willing slaves. Strong Andrew Tate vibes, put it that way. Queen Barbie, a.k.a. Margot Robbie, must then mobilize a counter-revolution, which she does with the help of her human friends, mother and daughter duo Gloria and Sasha. Using their Barbie wiles, they put the Kens back in their boxes. The film ends with her checking into a gynecology clinic, presumably so she can become a real woman. So that is why I will not be seeing this movie, because if that really is the plot line, the idea that we have to put men back into their boxes, which I think from my understanding, the person behind this film, Greta Gerwig, is in fact uh, one of these modern feminists. Rather than getting married, she has a partner. You know, all the things that come with modern feminism. If that is what she is trying to convey, that men are either idiots or bigots or sad, and when they demonstrate any form of masculinity, they must be put back into their boxes by women, I'm just not interested because I would like to raise my son to be a strong man. I would like to raise my son to understand that it's not a competition with women, that not even we, that we are necessarily aspiring towards this concept of, you know, equality 
yes, we want to be able to have the same opportunities, but men and women are never going to be the same. We should not be aspiring towards sameness, right? It is a perfect yin and a perfect yang, the masculine and the feminine coming together, um, having remarkable differences that work when they do come together. So I'm just telling you guys, you go see the movie. Don't let me spoil it for you, but Sarah Vine definitely spoiled it for me. All right, guys, now on that same topic, I need to weigh in on a very silly internet debate. And nobody's going to like what I have to say because I know every single conservative is on the other side of this, but I just disagree. So in case you missed it, um, there was this huge debate about whether or not Margot Robbie was hot, whether or not she was a perfect 10. She's just been cast as Barbie. And a lot of men weighed in and just said, you know, no, she's mid. Mid is sort of this slang term. Uh, you can say it's derogatory, but mid means exactly what it sounds like, average, right? And so you're obviously seeing all these posters of her. You're seeing her painted as Barbie. And this guy doesn't believe that she's that hot. He leaned in and said, this is her without makeup, definitely mid. What's really funny is that Margot Robbie's looks tend to be debated a lot in public. And I have not met a single man who believes that she is a perfect 10. And women are furious about this. Women are like, if she's not a 10, then what are the rest of us? What, what are we, what, like, what chance do we all have? Everyone's making videos talking about how dangerous, how dangerous people are actually saying that word. It is for men to say that Margot Robbie is imperfect when she's literally been cast as Barbie. Here's my take. She looks very beautiful in makeup as everybody does, especially when they're airbrushed as she is. This person wrote, If this is mid, you mofos have lost the plot on Twitter. And my take on this is that I'm agreeing with the majority of men. (laughs) I I think Margot Robbie, I've always thought, obviously she is a very good looking woman, but I would never ever say that she's a perfect 10 if this is how we're rating people. (laughs) um, You know, for me personally, Cameron Diaz in the mask, perfect 10. Um, Pamela Anderson, way back in the 90s. I, don't, I just name a lot of people. Um, Angelina Jolie and Mr. and Mrs. Smith. The challenge is if you can name women that you think are more beautiful than Margot Robbie, then obviously she's not a perfect 10. And it's not a big deal, by the way. If you're ranking somebody as a 7, that's pretty darn good. I think it's pretty good to be ranked as a 7. And maybe the problem is that you think that just because she's being cast as Barbie that that means that she's somehow perfect. She's not. You should be happy that guys are saying that she's mid. It's great. There's nothing, nothing wrong with being an average looking person. I think she's probably, I think personally she's above average. Like I think she is pretty, but I just would never be like Margot Robbie is a perfect 10. So kill me. I don't know. I don't know. I just wanted to weigh in on that internet debate to be the lonely girl that doesn't, that agrees with most of the guys and just doesn't think that she's a perfect 10. All right, guys, moving on. In case you haven't heard this, Sofia Vergara and Joe Manganiello are getting a divorce. That's not interesting, really, because that happens all the time in Hollywood. But the rumors that are coming out about why they are getting a divorce, friends are speaking out, are actually quite culturally significant. The first thing, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I opened up to you guys about how I'm just not a drinker. I'm not a consumer of alcohol. I don't get drunk on the weekends. I don't get drunk ever, really. Um, And the reason why I share that with you is because I wanted to sort of give people the permission to say no to alcohol in a culture that seems to celebrate it so much without passing any judgment. Well, I, unbeknownst unbeknownst to me, I found out that Joe Manganiello has actually been sober for a really long time. People are leaking that part of the reason that they got divorced is that their lifestyles were too different because Sofia Vergara very much likes to drink and very much likes to party. And it kind of called into this question whether or not relationships can work if you have a sober partner and the other person is not sober. Now, to be clear, they said that Sophia was very support, that Sophia was very supportive of his sobriety. It wasn't like she was trying to lead him back into drinking, but psychologists have sort of leaned in and said that in these environments, when somebody is trying to keep their sobriety, it doesn't, tend to work, that eventually the partner has to either rise to the level of saying, I'm going to be sober with you, or the relationship falls apart. The second piece of why they are saying that they got a divorce is because he really wanted to start a family and she wasn't interested and it caused a rift. And why that was interesting for me is because it's not the first time that Sofia Vergara has been in a relationship where at root of the problem of why it fell apart was this topic of having children. And in case you 
didn't know this. She, she used to be engaged to somebody for a long time named Nick Loeb. And Nick Loeb and her are still fighting it out in the courts over the embryos that they came together to make. So it's just in case you're not familiar, obviously, with how IVF works. You can just freeze your eggs, but it's very unlikely that your eggs will survive on their own unless you create a full embryo. So they came together, her eggs, his sperm, and I don't know how many embryos that they have, but they've been locked in a seven-year legal battle because he is apparently pro-life and he is suing the Beverly Hills Reproductive Center where they created those initial embryos because he wants them implanted. He's looking at these embryos as these are my children. And Sofia Vergara says, like, we're not together anymore. I want these embryos, my our children, to be destroyed. It's a huge ethical question when we start talking about the topic of science being used to create children. These are things that people don't like to talk about because it makes them uncomfortable because we constantly want to think about IVF and surrogacy as always just helping people start families. When in reality, there are these tremendously deep, complex issues that arise. What, whose side are you on here? Do you say, oh, no, it's totally fine. She's right. It would be weird if her eggs were implanted into another surrogate, which is what Nick Loeb wants. He wants a chance for his children to survive. Again, that's quite pro-life. But then you say, well, for Sophia, that's uncomfortable. Well, for Nick, it's uncomfortable for her to just destroy them and to say, I don't care that we have these children that are frozen somewhere. I just want them killed because you and I are no longer together. It's a it's a dark, really a dark consideration. And I was just interested to kind of bring that to the forefront to see what you guys think about it and whether or not me talking to you about all of these ethical issues that are arising with IVF and surrogacy has struck a chord or has it transformed you? Have, are you aware of all of these things that are going on? All right, guys, we still have some time left. So I'm going to jump into your comments uh, of episodes past. Starting with Jason Aldean. Obviously, if you're following me on Instagram, you know how fired up I was about the fact that CMT canceled his music video because they were upset that it had a pro-police message. CMT is run by a bunch of liberals. Uh, Jason hasn't really said anything about that. But the good news is that small town America has reacted and he now holds the number one song as well as the number one video on the U.S. uh, music charts. All right, so Ironside1776 writes, as a Californian, I played this at my local Buffalo Wild Wings and the whole place cheered and toasted to it. I was genuinely surprised in a good way, not because how woke some parts of California is, but of the gesture and how patriotic my town is. I love it. I, I Obviously, the song is now going to be deemed the patriotic anthem. At Invest, Build, and Power writes, I listened to the song because of the controversy. To me, it's a great song, and I understand his point. He is right 100%. I live in the big city, and I'm here to tell you that violence is at an all-time high. I can't wait to move to a small town and get away from these savages. Jason is simply bringing a positive message and letting animals know to stay away. I'm black, and to me, the song is not racist at all. It's about being a decent person and demanding respect. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, it's very weird. He used actual news clips of people that were rioting in the streets, and yet people were offended that how dare you unveil the reality of these inner city communities of what goes on when somebody gets upset? How dare you unveil the reality of the fact that people are no longer decent and people no longer have respect for their neighbors? They think that it's acceptable to riot and to loot when a cultural issue arises, or if a a black man uh, is unarmed unarmed, allegedly, and you believe that he has faced uh, severe consequences at the hands of police, you're just going to decide that you can riot local stores that have nothing to do with that. It's horrific. It's wrong. You can punch an old lady in the face. As one of the lyrics says, yeah, this is what happens. People are upset about any issue. You can be upset about Roe v. Wade, and somehow that gives you the, the right to march into a store and take a flat screen TV it's, it's p- completely ridiculous. And that was one of the best parts about me moving out of Washington, D.C., because I was getting so tired of seeing all of these local local store owners being forced to board up their windows because they knew that Antifa was going to come riot every time they were upset about any decisions that Trump had made, that they knew that they were going to throw ropes over statues and try to pull them down if they were upset about any decision that the Trump administration made. I mean, it's pretty ridiculous. Doesn't happen where I live now. And that's refreshing. And that is the beauty about living in the South. And as my family and I move deeper into the South and into a small town community, it's what I look the most forward to. 
Bella writes, I'm not a fan of Aldine, but I listened to the song and this is crazy. I bought the song to show him some support. We have to fight back against insanity. There is nothing racial about this song. There isn't even something you could misunderstand. They know there's something racial about the song. You know, as I said yesterday, this was really about using black Americans as shields and trying to come up with a reason to problematize the song in some way so that they could have an excuse to viciously attack Jason because he is so open about his conservative principles. Him and his wife are so open about the fact that they support the police and that they love America. And in Hollywood, that simply isn't allowed. Regarding Carly Russell, yes, it's finally time to talk about her again. I'm so excited to see what your comments are. Obviously, this is my obsession for the week. I can't do anything, guys. I can't eat. I can't sleep. I can't be a mother. I can't be a wife. I can't be a good anything because I'm obsessed with the Carly Russell story. That's where my head's at. Faye writes, Candace, you are the best, okay? This country needs to make an example out of her. These kids get away with murder nowadays. Remember the early 90s when kids would shoplift at the mall? And the cops would make an example out of them by having them sit in front of the store in handcuffs. I bet you those teenagers never stole again. Some people, unfortunately, didn't grow up with any moral compass. You can tell Carly is, is one of those people. Just look at the behavior of her parents. I can't shake my head enough how embarrassing the world continues to look at us and laugh. Yeah, I was I'm upset about the parents because it seems to me that they are good people. Obviously, they they seem to be Christ focused. Uh, there was tons of mentioning about prayers to God and asking the community to come together. And they obviously, she grew up in some sort of a stable household. We can assume, obviously, we never can confirm it. And so I think what happened is that ultimately, they, the parents knew. They, and there's no question. When she arrived at that front door, they knew. You could see it all over the mother's and the father's face as they were giving this interview, which maybe they had committed to um, before she showed up at their front doorstep. Who knows what the circumstances But I feel like they didn't make the right decision after her story began falling apart, which they would have known as the second she got dropped off by her abductor. They should have just come forth with the truth. And I was just very much raised in a household that had too much discipline, you know. And if I had ever done anything to bring that sort of shame to my family, my mother would have dragged me by the ear in front of reporters and she would have told on me. And I would have felt embarrassed and shamed. And we don't have enough of that anymore. I think this kind of gets into the concept of soft parenting, where people are just like, I'm going to support my child no matter what. And I want them to just feel loved. And in reality, sometimes what your child needs to face is harsh discipline and consequences. And this is a circumstance where Carly needs her parents to not have her back or to have her back in the capacity of allowing shame to be that ingredient that transforms her. Because obviously her life is a hot pile of garbage right now. Moving on, uh, Chrissy writes, as someone who has endured hell, sexual assault, and the arduous process of police reports and their extreme prodding by police, this infuriates me. It me. It makes it so, so, so much harder for actual victims. Police get more jaded, understandably. Yeah, I know I've heard that argument that police are going to become more jaded, but I don't think so because I, I think it's quite rare uh, for someone to stage their own abduction. Like, I don't think that has, that really ever happens. I I mean, maybe people think that someone's been abducted and they find out that their daughter's run away, but it takes a tremendous amount of stupidity to think that you are going to be able to stage your abduction and get away with it. So I'd like to say that it happens so few and far between that the police are probably just blown away um, at the fact that it ever, that it, that it could happen. I, I don't think they're going to look at other cases and think, well, this must just be another Carly Russell. I hope. Walker Dre writes, a lot pisses me off about it, but the parent's apathy is what really gets at me. Not even holding your child responsible tells me all I need to know about you. Very much agreed. Andrew Miller finally writes, as punishment, she should have to pay the whole cost of the investigation, which could add up to the hundreds of thousands of dollars. This would be a deterrent to keep people from lying about being victimized. Unfortunately, I think if she was stealing um, from her employer, and she was stashing, you know, $107 in her sock. And she was looking for bus tickets and not flight tickets. I, I, she doesn't have the money for that. So it's not going to be a real punishment. When you pursue people for money, if they don't have it, it doesn't really mean anything. Um, it's, it's a major deterrent in filing lawsuits. It's like you can sue whoever you want, but if they don't have the money, they don't have the money. And I don't think that Carly has that sort of money to be able to pay for that investigation. So I'm more comfortable with her having to serve time in prison. I think it could be good for her. As I said, it sounds like her life is a hot pile of garbage and just being able to reflect in a prison cell for however long the time is 
might be good for her. Maybe prison is good for some people and she might be some of the people that it is good for. Seriously, I myself, I've not seen the movie and it's showing in my country actually, but I don't think I'll be going to waste my time and my money to see a movie that will aggravate me because I don't understand what's, what, what has men done to women. And the thing, do you know my problem with all these movies? The thing is that the innocent girl that is still growing up will not take it on and think that, yeah, okay, that's how, that's how things are supposed to be. Men are not supposed to tell me what to do. Yeah, I'm meant to be in control. And that's how they'll grow. Come on, guys. Like, I don't understand. If it's, and the funny part is that the, the, the woman that wrote the movie has a husband. So I don't even understand. So what is her problem? Is it that men in a, in a formal life or what, something, maybe a man that the man did something to her and she's coming for men, or he too, she grew up watching, maybe she grew up watching her mother or something like that, and she has assumed that even that married, or maybe that, that could be the way her, mar her marriage is, maybe she has a husband, I don't even understand, because I don't understand why it's okay for you to be telling other women that men are women are oppressed when you are doing a movie like this did anybody stop you to do this kind of movie that's the question mark to me if nobody stopped you to do something like this why are you going about crying that you have been oppressed like we really we need, we need to do better and if a parent you a mother watching this please do right by your child even as a father do right by your child don't go about becoming uh, the woman in your family as a man don't do that don't demean yourself and don't allow yourself to be demeaned by that. Don't. Please. I would love to hear from you guys, like, what's your opinion? Do you think that people are overreading me into it? Like, I've seen Ben Shapiro, what? I've seen Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro actually went to see the movie himself. I saw, I decided that, okay, I love Ben Shapiro. Let me hear what he has to say. Karnis is saying the same thing. She hasn't seen it. And I'm, the way she said she won't, know, she won't be going to see it, I trust her she won't see it. So, I, I, like... I, do you think that they were really meaning into the into the movie? Like someone said, it's just a movie. But in this life, guys, there's nothing like a just. That's how you are getting it wrong. There is nothing like it's just. No, 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 no. There's nothing like it's just. Your spirit is taking me something. <laughs> you don't know. Before you know, in the future, you start manifesting it unconsciously. You don't know that it's something your spirit has picked up. So let me know your thoughts are in the comment section. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Take care of yourself. Be you, do you, but do not conform. And be happy, guys. Everything's going to be alright. Bye.